Hello, and welcome to the Spoken Technical Two or Four Year Virtual College Fair. My name is Krista, and I will be your facilitator tonight. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Your camera and microphone are off, you are muted, and your video is off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, if you have any questions for any of our panelists tonight, please use the Q&A button to type them in. We invite you to sign up for more sessions that are happening tomorrow. Please check out the schedule on the website. And a recording of this will be available at strivescan.com slash Spokane. I also want to let you all know that at the end of the session, uh, each institution will be dropping a Zoom link uh, for a, a supplemental session afterwards. So uh, stay tuned for that. So first up, we have Oregon Institute of Technology. All righty. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cassidy Beery. I'm here on behalf of Oregon Institute of Technology, aka Oregon Tech. Um, we are Oregon's only polytechnic university, so I'm just going to start off with a couple of these um, really great points here. Hands-on curriculum, projects and labs, internships and externships are, are a huge focus here at Oregon Tech. Um, we are number one for return on investment. So that is a really great point um, to keep in mind as we go along here. Um, cost is something we're going to talk about as well. Oregon Tech is a pretty small campus, um, so in total, a little over 5,000 students, but that's going to include our undergraduate, graduate, online students, our multiple campuses, um, so definitely a wide range of students here. Um, we are powered by the sun and heat. Um, our unique location located in Klamath Falls um, is powered by both geothermal um, located underneath the campus and then um, over 7,000 solar panels on our Klamath Falls campus as well. We have over 40 different academic programs, over 50 student clubs and organizations, of course, NAIA athletics, and um, within those athletics, we play in the Cascade Collegiate Conference. Um, I do love to talk about these little points over here as well. Um, so our students are making it on average $60,000 per year, and 96% of those students are either um, employed or in graduate school within six months of employment. I'm actually an alum of Oregon Tech, um, so I really, really love talking about our student success um, and fortunately my own success as well. I earned a bachelor's degree in business management and marketing, um, so I'm here using that degree um, with recruitment and talking to all of you wonderful people. Um, so going on into those other degrees we offer, um, it's going to be your more traditional engineering degrees. We focus a lot on civil engineering, um, our CSET suite, which is going to be um, computer engineering technology. Of course, we offer electrical engineering and electronics engineering. Geomatics is a um, pretty unique degree up and coming here. You'll see this photo of students right down here. Um, geomatics um, students are stu studying land surveying um, and geographical information systems. Mechanical engineering, mechan uh, manufacturing engineering, and mechanical engineering technology are three of our mechanical disciplines. And then Oregon Tech was actually the very first university in the United States to offer renewable energy engineering as a bachelor's degree program. Currently, the only other offer within the United States is at Stanford. Um, we do offer a master's program as well. Um, a couple different master's programs throughout our engineering programs as well. Um, our tech infused business degrees, um, of course, something that I love talking about because I did earn one of them. Um, that's our marketing degree, but we do have accounting management, um, some other more tech focused degrees like technology and management, health informatics, healthcare management, information technology, and cybersecurity. One of our larger sides um, of programs is going to be in the healthcare field. Um, we have a biology health science degree that focuses um, as more of a pre professional degree. These students go on into um, med school, they pass the MCATs, and they go on to be, you know, our futures doctors, um, veterinarians, we've had a couple of those, um, and physical therapists. We also offer medical laboratory sciences up on our Portland Metro campus. Um, medical imaging technology offers five different disciplines um, that all include medical imaging within the body. Um, our nursing program is partnered with Oregon Health and Sciences University, our dental hygiene program, which we also have a partnership over in um, Chemeketa, respiratory care, of course, very important as this uh, pandemic is ongoing, and then our emergency medical services um, is a four-year bachelor's degree, but we also offer a two-year paramedic program um, and an EMT certification. Our applied sciences may be a little bit less tech-focused, um, less engineering-focused are going to be in applied psychology, 
Data science is one of our newer ones. Um, communication studies is a great opportunity for students that are looking to explore a little bit more and maybe you don't know exactly what you want to do. Um, communication studies is going to have um, a really broad range of elective classes. Environmental sciences, those students work really closely with our civil engineering students um, and our renewable energy engineering students um, to explore the land around us. So those students really get a lot of outdoor activity. Our population health management and professional writing programs and we're again going to be more of that applied science and less tech focused. Moving on into campus life, our main campus down in Klamath Falls, Oregon does have two housing options. Our residence hall is your more traditional style living with um, double rooms. We currently have no single options um, with someone of your same gender and of course shared bathrooms and kitchens. The village is our apartment style housing, uh, more a little bit reserved for upperclassmen students but freshmen are able to get into um, if possible. Those are of course apartment styles where you're sharing a living room, you're provided furniture. Um, those students are um, really living really in close quarters. It's really a lot of fun. Um, we offer a first floor experience, first year experience on the first floor of our residence hall. Um, those students really, um, really of course have a ton of fun. Um, maybe they're just missing a little bit of home and they want a little extra support. Um, so those are all first year students on the first floor. Student resources, um, some of your more, again, traditional resources that you're going to see on most college campuses, um, but they're really, really um, awesome on the Oregon Tech campus because we are so small. So our Student Success Center, um, located in the upper floor of our library, that's going to include um, student involvement and belonging, um, some of our academic advising programs. We do have a TRIO program um, and some access and campus equity services. Moving on into athletics, um, we do offer NAIA athletics. We are a division two school and we play within the Cascade Collegiate Conference. Um, so those are going to be other schools in your closer states like Washington, um, Idaho, Nevada, Arizona, a little bit of California as well. Um, some of our teams have done really, really well in the past few years, um, despite the challenges of last year. Clubs and programs, like I said, over 50 different programs. So you'll see them listed here and more on our website. Application and scholarship information, your biggest um, takeaway here is going to be a fourth year of math and these 3.0 or 2.5 GPA requirements. Something I want to point out over here as well is just the um, accessibility of the application. So we do have a fee waiver code for you. There is no essay required. We are test optional, no transcripts at the time of application, no letter of recommendation, no second language. Um, so really, really um, open and accessible for most students. We do have some on-campus events coming up here pretty soon um, up in the spring and then some here pretty soon in the fall. Thank you so much, Cassidy. So next up, we have Newman University. Right. Hello, everybody. My name is Lauren Aaron, and I am an admissions counselor at Newman University. I also actually graduated from Newman in 2018 with a BA in theater. Um, so I have a fairly recent perspective on what it's like to be a student there. So hopefully I can be a resource for you in that department. I was also super involved on campus as a commuter student. So I felt like I had to work a little extra hard to make those connections, but it wasn't too hard because Newman is a smaller school. We've got an, an average class size of about 18 and our entire uh, undergraduate population is 1200. Um, so we are a small liberal arts college located in Wichita, Kansas, which is Kansas's largest city. Um, we were established in 1933 and founded by the Adorers of the Blood of Christ and named for St. John Henry Cardinal Newman. Uh, so some things we are known for are uh, less student loan debt. Um, uh, we've got a really solid nursing program as well as our science programs. Um, we've got a, kind of a heart of community service at Newman. Some of our scholarships are really based around community service. Um, we really focus on the development of the whole person because we are a liberal arts institution, not just a specific focus area. We wanna make sure 
you can go out in the world and you have you can have conversations about a lot of different things because that makes you more marketable to employers. Um, and then along those same lines, um, we have high rates of employment upon graduation. So upon graduation, 71% of our students are employed in their field of study uh, versus the national average of 27%. And this is due to a lot of things in part because of our small class sizes and those personal relationships you can build with your professors, um, but also due to things like our navigator program, which we'll touch on in just a little bit. So here is a list of some of our undergraduate programs. Um, so first and foremost, we have art, which definitely has a special place in my heart. Being a theater major, I spent a lot of time in the art building. Um, there's lots of great opportunities there before you graduate. If you're focused on like the visual arts or graphic design, um, your pieces will be displayed in the gallery. So you can put that on your resume um, when you're out in the art world. Uh, again, we're known for our pre-med and our science facilities. Um, so that's a big thing. Uh, all of our facilities are so nice and up to date that KU Med actually sends their students over to us. Um, a lot of our professors are also professors at KU Med, um, so we've got a great track record for getting folks prepared um, for med school as well as law school and that kind of thing. We also have a really solid business department, um, and you could actually get your master's in just a year upon graduation um, if you major in business or social work at Newman. Uh, and then these are some of our pre-professional programs, and these really are focusing definitely heavily on um, the medical side of things. So now we can get into some misconceptions. First and foremost, um, Newman is uh, test optional. Um, so you do not have to take the ACT to come to Newman. You can if you want to. Um, if you really did well, do well on standardized testing, it's only going to help um, get you a higher um, scholarship and all of that good stuff. Um, and also price, because we're a private school, there's definitely um, a connotation that we're going to be a little bit more on the pricey side. And if you Google our tuition, it definitely looks that way. But again, it's super important at Newman that we are accessible um, to as many folks as possible. If you have a passion and a drive to learn, we want to make sure uh, that you have the opportunity to do so at Newman. So there is no application fee. We have incredible scholarships and a lot of them stack on top of each other. And we also um, waive out of state tuition. So now we can talk a little bit about some scholarships. So just for applying at Newman, we are automatically going to be awarded one of these academic scholarships. And we decide that based on the chart um, here in front of you. And we're going to go off your GPA or your ACT if you have it, whichever one's going to give you the most amount of money. We also have a St. Newman scholarship, which is a full ride, and we've got the requirements on there, um, as well as an AC Community Leadership Scholarship, which was one that I had when I was at Newman. It's $17,500 a semester. It does require a 3.0, and it helps if you have a passion for serving others because it does require 90 hours of community service a semester. Seems like a lot, but that breaks down to about three hours a week. So it's definitely doable. We also have some great art scholarships um, and theater scholarships uh, that range anywhere between 11 and $16,000 per year and kind of replace that academic scholarship. We also have some extra add-on scholarships on there like our music scholarship, um, if you're a part of our choir um, and our honors scholarship as well. We are a division two college, um, which means we can hand out larger academic and athletic scholarships. And there are a list of some of our sports um, that we have at Newman, as well as some intramurals if you're more like me and are just in it for the fun. Um, and then this is kind of, this is our freshman hall dorm on campus. It's sweet style living. So you're not sharing a bathroom with a whole floor of people. You've got one roommate and you share a bathroom with another group of roommates. So a total of three folks. There's laundry on site, internet and pool and ping pong, all that fun stuff. Uh, we have a ton of different clubs on campus. So you can, uh, you know, there's really something for everybody to get involved in. Um, so that's awesome. And then this is our navigator program. So uh, the long and short of it is basically in this program is totally optional, but we set you up with an alumni mentor in your field of study in the city that you wanna live and work in. So this really um, is testament to that 71% of our students having jobs upon graduation. And we also have a first to go program, which is kind of a support system for folks who are the first in their college to go, or first in their family to go to college. This is just a little bit more about our state-of-the-art science facilities. Um, and if you're interested in applying, again, it's free. You can just go ahead and um, follow this uh, website on the screen below. And that's all I have for you.
Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Lauren. Next up, we have the University of South Florida. Thank you, I'm just getting my PowerPoint up. Okay, hi, all the way um, from Florida. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't put it on slideshow. Okay, there we go. Um, my name's Jackie. I am an out-of-state recruiter advisor at the University of South Florida. Um, we have a new hashtag, ha uh, hashtag OneUSF, because we do have three different campuses um, that take up um, the Tampa uh, Bay area, uh, but we're under one consolidation. So again, we do have the three different campuses. When you think of a big D1 university, you would think of the Tampa campus. A majority of our students are all housed there, and that's actually the one um, that I'm housed on. Um, our St. Petersburg and Sarasota campuses offer a lot of the same advantages that you get on the Tampa campus, just much smaller uh, class sizes, more close-knit learning environment. Um, our total enrollment is over 50,000 students. Again, a majority of those students are all gonna be on the Tampa campus. Even though the Tampa campus is pretty large, we're still able to keep that student to faculty ratio at 21 and one with an average class size of 33 students. Um, during my presentation, I always bring up points of pride with USF. And one of those is definitely the diversity that you would see on our campus. 41.5% uh, of USF students come from diverse backgrounds. We have students from all 50 states and students coming from over 140 different countries. Another big point of pride is we do have over 200 majors and concentrations for students to choose from. Um, all 200 of those majors fall under our different USF colleges, and I have them all listed here. Just to name some of our most popular, it's going to be College of Business, College of Engineering, uh, College of Marine Science, because we are right next to uh, Clearwater Beach, St. Petersburg Beach, um, and Siesta Key Beach. Uh, and then our most competitive major is going to be uh, Nursing. Um, another point of pride I just like to shout out is uh, we are one of America's fastest rising universities now. Um, we're now ranked number 46 among public universities, and that ranking was through the U.S. News and World Report. Um, I love to talk to students about campus life and student life. At USF, we have over 700 different student clubs and organizations for them to get involved in. Um, they can be academic based, they can be religious based, uh, they could even just be based off of fun. Students can start their own clubs on campus. I've heard of a Harry Potter group, um, I Heart Chocolate Lovers group. Um, all you need is a faculty member to approve your club. Uh, we have over a thousand different on campus events each year from guest speakers, TED Talks, um, different concerts. Um, every Wednesday, we actually have our bar, uh, our Bulls Market Day on the quad where um, there's a lot of food trucks, vendors, and students can come out, set up a table and promote their different clubs. Uh, we are NCAA Division I athletics and we have 17 different uh, D1 teams. Our USF football team actually plays at Raymond James Stadium, which is uh, the same stadium where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play, uh, where Tom Brady plays. Uh, we also have recreation, intramural, and club sports for students to get involved in. We have several different restaurants, um, five different Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, Bento Sushi, just to name my favorites. Um, and we did just open our very own on-campus uh, Publix grocery store, which are really popular grocery stores in Florida. Uh, and we have our very own right on campus, so it's kind of convenient. Um, just to dive in a little bit more about our academics, I know that I mentioned we had over 200 different majors, um, but we're also a tier one research institution. So I like to point out to students that um, to earn that title as a tier one research institution, we have to offer research experience throughout all of those majors. So no matter what a student uh, wants to major in, they can get involved, involved in a research project starting their freshman year. It's research that they can have published by the time they graduate and uh, add that to their resume. We also have our Judy Genshaft Honors College for students to get involved in and they have their own scholarships, their own study abroad. Uh, we have our own study abroad office as well. Students can get involved in different faculty-led exchange programs. 
We also have access to local, national, and global internships for students. Our career services office is here to help students find those internships. Uh, so campus housing, we offer housing on the Tampa campus and St. Pete campus. Uh, we have traditional style, suite style, apartment style. Um, so it just really depends on if a student wants to live with roommates or they kind of want to be a little bit more independent. Um, throughout all the different housing styles, we also have a living learning community so students can uh, live with uh, people studying the same major who have, or who have similar interests. We also have a, the Greek village on campus for students that are interested in Greek life, they will have their, their own area. Um, and freshmen can apply to any of the housing styles. Um, so real quick, I just wanted to get into the admissions information. So to apply to USF, we try to keep it pretty simple. Um, you can apply online or through the coalition or the common application. We do have an application fee of $30, or you can submit your fee waiver. We accept ACT, SAT, or the NACAC fee waiver. And then to complete that application, we'll just need your high school transcript um, and your official standardized test scores. So we'll take ACT or SAT. Um, and as many times as you've taken those tests, please submit all your scores because we will composite your best score, your super score. Um, these are some important deadlines. We have the December 1st um, deadline for priority application and then January 15th to be in the running for, for these merit-based scholarships. So these scholarships are automatic as long as you apply and have everything, everything in by January 15th, you would um, be awarded one of the non-Florida um, merit-based scholarships. All right, sorry, I know I'm almost done, but this is also our, our cost of attendance. Um, we do have one of the lowest rates in the country, so just wanted to throw that one out there too. Um, beautiful destination, highly ranked, lots of degree options. <laughs> um, so just real quick at the end, um, you can feel free to email me um, admissions at usf.edu. It'll automatically route to, to me, Jacqueline Kane. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the chat. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Jackie. Next up, we have the Swiss Education Group. Hi, so I'm Jasmine. I'm the Western USA Counselor at the Swiss Education Group. Let me just share my screen with you. Um, but we are a network of four of the leading business, hospitality, and culinary arts schools in Switzerland. Something unique about us, this is actually one of our campuses. It's called the Co Palace because 100 years ago, this was a palace hotel where kings, queens, people like the Rockefellers stayed when they vacationed in Switzerland. And now this is one of our campuses. It's where you could study and where you would live. So Switzerland, for any students who haven't been, it is a tiny country in the heart of Western Europe. And when I say that it's tiny, I mean that in about the time it would take for you to drive from Seattle to Vancouver, Canada, you would have pretty much crossed the entire country. So you have a ton of opportunities to travel once you're over there. Going to another country when you're in Europe is almost like traveling to another state here in the US. Um, Switzerland's also known for being very safe, very stable politically, socially, economically, um, always at the top of the list of best places in the world to live or happiest countries in the world. And they're also known as the birthplace of modern hospitality. So for any students interested in pursuing those specific majors, um, this is, it has a really long tradition, um, both in terms of the hotels and its hospitality education. And so it is still famous worldwide. Program itself, it is quite different than maybe some of the other American schools you're looking into. Over in Europe, you are able to get your bachelor's degree in only three years. So it's not a four-year program. You can graduate in three years. And the reason for that is we don't require general eds. So you go directly into your major in your first year. What's different about our program is that our students do two internships in their first two years. So you study for the first half of the year. And then in the second half of the year, we send you out to do an internship and to put everything into practice in the real world. And so the internship, it is mandatory for um, all of our students at the undergraduate level to complete both. It's always paid. They're usually four to six months, although some students do internships up to a year long, which would that, I mean, that would delay their graduation a little bit. And I mean, as you can see here from some examples of places where our students have interned, super international. If there's a country you've always wanted to visit, our career coaches will work with you to try to find those opportunities there. And while many students do choose to intern at hotels or restaurants or within the hospitality field, 
We also have some students who intern at places like banks or luxury Swiss watchmakers or nonprofits or places like the UN. So again, you will work with a career coach and they will try to find the opportunities that best match your interests and your goals um, wherever those opportunities may be in the world. And so after your two internships, you would come back to us for your final year, at the end of which you would graduate with a double degree. So you'd have a Swiss degree from us, as well as an American or UK degree, depending on your program of study from one of our partner institutions. Um, our American partners are Washington State University, um, right, right here in Washington, um, as well as Northwood University. So for students who may want American accreditation, you will have um, fully recognized degree. Um, you can always come back to the States to work or continue your studies. You graduate a year ahead of most of your friends and you would already have one year of work experience, likely in two different countries. For students who may be interested in pursuing a master's degree, you could do that in four years total. And so like I mentioned at the start, um, we are a group of four schools. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of each program, but my contact information will be at the end. So please feel free to reach out if there's a program you want to know more about. I'll just briefly say that uh, all of our schools were actually ranked in the top 10 globally in this year's uh, QSC World University rankings within the hospitality and leisure management category. And for any students who may be interested in culinary arts, we offer a really flexible program um, ranging from uh, three month long uh, certificate to a full three year bachelor's degree that encompasses both um, you know, kitchen skills as well as restaurant and business management. So um, again, please feel free to reach out to me if you'd like more details about any specific program. In terms of life in the classroom, small class sizes, usually 15 to 25 students a class. Um, for the culinary courses, it caps out at 12 students within the kitchen. Classes are all in English, so you don't have to worry if you don't speak French or German, which are the languages most widely spoken in Switzerland. And we work with a variety of industry leaders. Some of them are listed here. And so we don't want our students um, just you know, sitting in a classroom being talked at by a lecturer. We want our students really actively applying all the material they're learning. And so um, our partners, they do guest lectures, they do field trips, um, they offer case studies or real world projects. Um, so for example, our culinary students have made a fondue set for Kempinski. Um, they've worked on a marketing project for the luxury skincare company, La Mer. And so it is a really dynamic environment. Schools are all based in former hotels. Um, so as you may remember from that first image, that is one of the campuses. But that really gives you the facilities to put into practice everything you're learning about. Our, our schools are all super diverse. Um, so most of our students are international. They're not Swiss or, or American. So you really get to make friends from all over the globe. And career opportunities is definitely a major reason a lot of students choose to come to us. Um, the most recent number I saw was 97, 96% were employed upon graduation. But for us, it's about more than just job placement. We wanna help you build your career. And so 89% of our alum actually hold management positions or have started their own company within five years of graduation. And I think again, it's because you graduate with a resume that really stands out for most of your peers. Just briefly, in terms of admissions, um, rolling admissions, although I always recommend students apply when you apply for your American schools, just because there is a visa application process as well. We're not on Common App, although we do have an online application and we are test optional. Um, and this was the case pre-COVID, so this will likely remain the policy in the future. Um, so again, thank you so much for listening. Again, my name is Jasmine. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or if you'd like to learn more about what it's like to study in Switzerland with us, or even if you want to learn more about hospitality to see if that might be a field you want to explore. Um, thanks so much. And I will pass it on to the next counselor. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Next up, we have Lafayette College. Alrighty. Hi, folks. Let me present. Um, okay, so hi folks, my name is Jade. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Lafayette College. Um, I actually graduated Lafayette in 2016, majored in psychology with a concentration in neuroscience, um, so more natural science focused, and I'm here to talk to you about Lafayette. Um, I can't talk about Lafayette without talking about where we're located. We're located in eastern Pennsylvania, which is just on the border of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So if you look on the lower right hand corner, you'll see a little bit map of, the, of where we are. Um, so we are located on the east coast. We're about an hour and a half north of Philadelphia and an hour and a half west of New York City. I, I think it's a great geographical sweet spot. We're not in the heartbeat of a city, but we're also not in the middle of nowhere. Um, you have easy accessibility to Boston, Washington, to a lot of other bigger metropolitan areas beyond the New York and Philly area um, through buses or cars or other forms of transportation. 
Easton is a small, um, I would say like an artistic hipster kind of vibe going on. There's a lot of beautiful murals surrounding the city, but we're also known for our food festivals. In the Lehigh Valley, which is kind of the larger area where we're located, there's a lot of entertainment options with the state theater, with music festivals. We just had a garlic festival last week, so it was wonderful. Um, it got a little stinky, but I mean, what can you say with a lot of people who are eating garlic? Um, but that's just about a little bit of where we're located. The other thing I want to point out in this photo is if you look at the very top of the screen, you'll see some buildings hidden among the, amongst the treetops. And that's where Lafayette is. Lafayette is located on top of College Hill. That's about 15-ish, uh, 20 minutes walk downtown to the heartbeat of Easton, which is what you're looking at right now. And then probably like a 25, maybe 30 minute walk up the hill because you are going uphill. So depending how fit you are and how quickly you need to get up there. But we also have buses for students so that they don't have to sweat going up the hill. With regards to who we are. So we are around 2,600, 2,700 students. Um, we are a traditional liberal arts college. We are strictly undergraduate um, and about, and when you think about our student population, you'll see that we have around 21 students who identify as students of color, 12% of our students identify as first generation, and then you'll see the other statistics here. Our average class size is around 18 to 22 with student faculty ratio of 10 to one. We have over 50 areas of study. This is just slightly old day. We actually 59 areas of, st of study um, and students who attend Lafayette are attending for the liberal arts education. But what really brought, draws students to us are engineers who want that liberal arts context. So we have a really strong department in engineering that encases seven majors in engineering, whether it's chemical, mechanical, electrical, civil engineering studies, a bachelor of science in engineering, or dual degree of engineering and international affairs. The great thing about our engineering department is that it's the largest department on campus, which houses about 25% of our students. So if you're interested in engineering, we also send our engineering students abroad. And that's usually one of the biggest pulls just because a lot of other technical schools don't allow their students to study abroad as an engineer. So if you are interested, we send our students to Madrid, Spain, and Bonn, Germany. You'll still graduate in four years with a better accreditation, but you'll gain the opportunity to explore the world while also learning about engineering. For the majority of the students who are not interested in engineering, we have three quarters, three quarters of our students who are various other majors. So we are a liberal arts school, as I mentioned before. Um, the most popular major outside of engineering is actually economics, economics, government law, psychology, and it trickles down from there. A lot of our students will participate in research. Um, because we are so small, we have an abundance of research opportunities and students can engage in those as early as their first year. Simple as raising, um, as going up to your professor and seeing if there's any room in their laboratory spaces. We spend over half a million dollars on student research on campus. We have research opportunities in all of our academic disciplines. So arts, music, um, English, theater, but also the natural sciences, the humanities and the social sciences. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. Um, this is just a few photos of our beautiful campus. As you can see right here, that is where we're located in the hillside of Lehigh Valley, our beautiful library, as I mentioned before. We are division one in 23 varsity teams. And so that really adds on to the school spirit. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, that is our mascot. We are the Lafayette Leopards and we're very proud of that. One of my favorite traditions on campus is our Lafayette Lehigh rivalry. Um, our neighbor to the West, Lehigh University, we've been playing them for about 157 years. The longest coll collegiate played rivalry consecutively in the United States. And this is something we're very proud of. And so um, our football game for the Lafayette Lehigh rivalry is the biggest tradition that we have on campus and it draws a lot of school spirit. We have a lot of different fundraisers, a lot of different events for students to kind of get the rah-rah behind it. Um, and I'm really excited because this year, now that COVID's kind of dwindling a little bit, we're going to be able to play them um, on Lehigh's campus this year. So I hope we win. So far, we've been doing okay, but I'm really excited this year and hope we'll, hopefully we'll win. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is a little bit about admissions. So admissions and financial aid, we are part of the common application. Uh, students who are interested in applying to Lafayette will be automatically considered for all of our uh, marquee, for our, all of our merit scholarships. So we have three categories. We have the marquee fellowship, which is full tuition. We have the marquee scholarship, which is half tuition. And we have the marquee awards, which are between ten dollars to $20,000. When you apply to Lafayette, you're automatically considered for all of the merit scholarships. However, we, do, we are one of those schools that look at demonstrated interest. So we look to see the student's interest in Lafayette. As you saw before, we're around 2,700 students. So we do craft the community with every student that is um, admitted. And so we want students to be excited about Lafayette and for them to come to campus. 
rather than for someone who just applied to the school just because. If you're interested in applying to Lafayette, we have a regular decision on January 15th, and we have regular early to decision one on November 15th and early decision two on February 1st. Early decision one and early decision two are the same uh, deadline, same applications. However, they just have two different deadlines. So it just depends on kind of what you're interested in. For students who are applying as juniors and seniors right now, we're test optional. And so for those folks, um, you don't have to worry about your test scores. Even when you apply to Lafayette, you don't need test scores to be considered for the merit, for the merit scholarships. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me via my email. I'll go back to the first page. But I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe out there. So there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jade. I now ask um, everyone to please turn their cameras back on for the Q&A portion. And um, please remember to include in the chat the Zoom link for the next session. Um, so the question that I want to ask is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your uh, school? I guess I'm up first presentation order. <laughs> um, something that I love to think about and I want um, students who think about Oregon Tech to remember, um, something that I may have forgotten to mention in our um, <laughs> in my presentation actually is our small class sizes. Um, so our overall undergraduate um, population is a little over 5,000 like I mentioned, but our Klamath Falls main campus is about 2,100. So that average class size is about 17 and student faculty ratio is about 15 to one. Um, in my time on the Oregon Tech campus, I really, really loved those personal connections um, being made. And it really led me to some great opportunities, a couple internships, um, and finally my job placement. Um, mine is going to be pretty similar. Um, I graduated from Newman in 2018, and I missed the you know relationships that I built with my professors so much that I decided to come back and work there. Um, we've got similar class sizes, about 18 in a class. Um, so if you want to, you can really build those personal relationships with your professors, and they're going to be there to give you that one-on-one -on -one attention if you need it, if you're struggling, um, and you also write great letters of recommendation and have those connections um, in the professional world because a lot of times, you know, they were professionals um, in their area of study before they were professors, so. I always just like to talk to students about how easy it is to get involved in something at USF, um, whether it's academic, they're getting involved in different research projects um, with the Office of Undergraduate Research, or if it's a club, um, a lot of ways to make friends, again, over 700 different clubs for students, um, and then all year round sunshine, we always have things going on outside. I'm actually from Illinois and moved here four years ago, so um, easy to sell that too. <laughs> Um, I mean, for us, I'd say join us in Switzerland for a super unique international experience that really prepares you for an international career, whether that's in hospitality and culinary arts or beyond. I think a lot of students will assume that a small school means a lot of competition, but that's actually not the case. At Lafayette, we have a lot of collaboration, um, a lot of interdisciplinary projects that are created by the students for the students. And so there's a lot of opportunity for students who are maybe computer science students, but also interested in art, or if you are interested in history and neuroscience. So there's a lot of combinations that most people might think are quirky, but we really encourage our students to um, embrace the current motto of why not, and just try the things that they're interested in. Amazing, thank you all so much. Um, I have one quick question. So if you uh, have a campus tradition, what's your favorite campus tradition? Um, one of Oregon Tech's big traditions um, usually happens during our introductory like week of welcome, um, but it happens <laughs> almost weekly is our hike up to the O. So Oregon Tech is sort of situated up on a hill in the city of Klamath Falls and behind us are these beautiful rolling hills. Up on the hill you'll see a giant big O that's maintained by our fraternity. Um, so students can hike up to that O and you'll see a beautiful sunset or a sunrise. Um, there's a nice little bench up there. Come take a seat. Um, hiking up there during um, the snow <laughs> during the winter time is not recommended, but um, some students <laughs> have made it up there. Um, and it's a, just a really, really fun opportunity and fun tradition. Students really love it. 
Uh, my favorite tradition is at Newman is actually put on by our MCLO club, uh, which stands for Multicultural Leadership Organization. You may have one at your high school. Um, and basically, they put on this big cultural extravaganza every year. And it's honestly one of Newman's biggest events. They bring in all kinds of vendors um, from uh, all different cultures. So you have access to foods that you've never gotten to try before. And if you're anything like me, food is definitely the way to your heart. Um, and so there are a ton of free food opportunities on campus and that's probably my favorite one. I'd probably say um, at USF, we every Wednesday we have our Bulls Market Day on the quad. So for us too, we have a lot of food there that day. Um, and it's cool to see our students promoting their different clubs to have new students join them. So definitely our Bulls Market Day. For me, I mean, from some of our campuses, we welcome our students with um, Swiss fondue. I mean, when in Switzerland, right, you got to try the cheese. So that's always something that I look forward to when I get the chance to visit. They all sound delicious. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite traditions, I mentioned the Lafayette Lehigh, but actually my favorite from being an alum is the 1100. In your first year, you have the Thousand Nights Dance. It's a really great way for the first year class to meet each other just a few weeks into the fall semester. But then in your senior year, you have the 100. You have 100 nights before graduation. And so it's a really bittersweet moment where we get the whole senior class together. You can visibly see all the relationships you formed. A lot of our campus partners will attend that event. It's also off campus, so it's at a nicer venue. Um, and so it's really one of my favorite bittersweet moments just because it's just a, a kind of a wonderful event. Um, but then it's also a little scary because then you realize you have 100 days before graduation. So what are you going to do? And that really encourages students to check out our Gateway Career Center if they haven't done so already. Um, but that's my favorite tradition. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. And thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm going to just quickly share my closing slide to wrap up this session. But uh, again, thank you so much to our presenters tonight and our panelists. Uh, and thank you for everyone uh, for joining us and watching this. After you close this window, there is a quick uh, five question survey that will appear. Uh, I invite you to sign up for more sessions that are happening tomorrow. And a recording of this will be available at strivescan.com slash Thank you so much and have a great night.